Good morning, everyone. It's Lida. How are you guys doing today? Sorry, I'm a minute late or something. Once again, had a little bit of technical trouble here connecting my ethernet. I don't know why it was kind of acting silly. So anyways, you guys say hi when you get on here so that I know that uh, I can start blabbing away when I know that you guys are here. I'm going to show you my mug today and it's actually perfectly fitting for this week. Yoga pants and coffee. Yep, that was pretty much exactly what my week was like. And um, that's what we're going to talk about today because I think a lot of people are feeling sort of the same way that I am based on conversations we've had in the group. Um, you know, it's been challenging times and uh, I don't think a lot of us are on our game um, for sure. And we absolutely have no reason to feel guilty about that. Okay, I just want to say that from the onset. <laughs> I mean, come on, um, you have to do what you have to do. But then at some point, and this is kind of where I'm at right now, at some point you kind of go, God, I gotta get my shit together. And I'm sorry if I, I hopefully that doesn't offend anybody, but there really is no other way to say it in a, that really hits home like that. And it's like, I really seriously feel like I got to rally myself and get back to where I was before because I've just gone like way off and in so many ways, right? So we'll talk about that. And I want to know how you guys are feeling. Like, have you been, you know, really crushing your keto and everything that you've been doing or because of what's all been going on in the world, have you found that things have changed for you um, in that way? And it's, you know, I think under normal circumstances, it's pretty easy to... Um, let stress kind of derail us on that. But this is, these are unforeseen circumstances. I mean, these are like, this is, this is something like, like nobody could have predicted, right? So um, I think this is probably very, very common. I'm sure I'm not the only one that feels this way. Um, so yeah, so tell me how you guys are doing. I know some people are still really rocking it and I'm just like, oh, thank you, thank you. Give us some pointers um, because some people feel super, uh, let's just say they feel way more in control when they are super, super strict. So as long as they don't allow themselves to kind of give in to the stress and they stick to their plan, it actually helps them to feel better. Um, for a lot of us, we kind of don't. <laughs> we, we kind of like, um, you know, I, I won't say crumble, but you know, just kind of go, uh, there's so much going on right now. I, I just, you know, I can't really. And I'm going to tell you once more people aren't here, I'm going to tell you um, kind of what my uh, path has been over these few weeks. Um, so I know everybody is in a different place in the world. And, um, you know, you might be at different levels of um, social distancing, self-isolation, possibly quarantine. Uh, maybe you've been off work for a long time. Maybe you just got off work. Maybe you're still working. I mean, there's, there's just so many variables with all of us in here. So I'm just going to say good morning, you guys. Kaylee, Veronica, Sonia, Teresa. Good morning. Good morning. I'm so glad you guys are here. I was so excited to come on today. Honestly, I get... I get like giddy. It's like, yay, I get to talk to my friends because it is it is very um, isolating here. <laughs> I'll tell you about that a little bit later. <laughs> oh, my sister's here. Good morning, Lori. I'm right there with you. Been totally off the rails, but ready to connect, reconnect with my lifestyle. Yes, absolutely. That's, that's what I'm doing too. Good morning, Julia. Sonia, I was so stressed with online school and working an assistant living facility. Oh, I need to get my together so bad. I'm just going to say shit. You know what? I This is my my talk. I'm just going to say shit. So hopefully that doesn't offend anybody. I don't think it's that bad of a word. Um, Sonia, thank you so much for everything that you're doing. And I want to say thank you too for everyone out there in the healthcare field. And, and I'm going to forget people. So that's why I didn't want to do a full list. But anyone that is out there working that still has contact 
with people. I mean, you are out there every single day. And as hard as it is for those of us that are staying home, it's really nothing compared to what you guys are doing. So thank you so much. Just really want to tell you how much I appreciate you and everything that you're doing. Um, but yeah, Sonia, that's a, that's a lot of stress, what you're dealing with. Kaylee says, have been sticking with keto, but need to start tracking again. Yes. Okay. Well, that's good. That's really great that you stuck with keto this whole time. That's really good. And tracking definitely helps. And it helps us to feel in control of our situation and control of, you know, what can we control? We can control tracking. That's for sure. Uh, we can totally do that. And um, I think this week, a lot of us are just going to get right back to it again. I'm not going to do a challenge or anything like that, but we'll just talk about it every day of different things that we can do. Um, oh, Sonia says, we have five prisons here too, 29 confirmed cases and 3,700 inmates in quarantine. Wow, that is a lot. I, I'm. It's just boggling to me, you know, of the differences all over the world. You know, like there's countries that are way ahead of us and then, you know, Canada, United States, you know, fairly close, I think, in where they are at. Um, but it's really, it's so different everywhere. Like I have friends that are in other countries and the way that they kind of handle their people or whatever are, is significantly different than say we would here in North America. And then even just from, you know, Canada to the States and then even just from province to province and state to state, I mean, it's, it's just so different. And yeah, it's just like, it really, it makes me think like everyone's having these really unique experiences, you know, based on what is happening in their area, but then also what is happening with themselves. It's just, it's, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a, it's a lot for everybody. Um, that's for sure. Teresa says, I do great during the day, but in the evening I fall off keto. I know it's because I'm not busy and I start stressing, ready to get my poop together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not being busy, you know, and that's, <laughs> That, that's one of the things when I, I'm going to go down my each week that I've been here in self-isolation and, and what I did because I made some notes for myself. Some of them are kind of funny, but um, I found that I was super, super busy at first. And then it was sort of like I didn't have anything else to do. What the heck? Like, you know, like you've cleaned every drawer, you've, you've organized every cupboard, you've organized all your stock or whatever. And then unless you're working a lot from home, it's like what do you do? You're not going out. And oh my gosh. So yeah, I totally get that. I totally get that. Um, good morning, Lynette. Uh, Michelle says, oh, my dad passed away a month ago and I've been struggling to get back to track. Oh, I'm so sorry, Michelle. I'm really sorry about your dad. And that, that is a, that is a big thing, um, to handle. And then with everything going on now too, on top of everything, I mean, you got to give yourself a bit of a free pass for sure. But my thing is like, you know, when, when you're kind of in it, when you're kind of in that stressful time, I think, I don't think that is like right then when you're in, it, I don't think that is the time to say, come on, get my shit together, whatever. You have to allow yourself to have those feelings and, and whatever's going on with you. But when you get to that point where you're like, okay, I've kind of, you know, I'm kind of done with that. I, I really need to get back on track. I need to have some control in my life. That's when you start putting a plan in place. And I don't think anyone should feel bad about wherever they were when they were in that other place. Um, I don't feel bad um, because I went off <laughs> and I will tell you about that. Um, Deb says she has to get on track. I totally get it. Sadie, good morning. Uh, Carenza, good morning. Okay, so um, I have been, we have been here in, in, in our town and our area or whatever, um, kind of like stay at home, don't go out unless you absolutely have to kind of thing for, I'm going to say like three weeks. Um, some people more strict than others, um, but I'll say generally three weeks. So in our, in our household, it's been three weeks. And so I wrote this little list of just the different little things and how things have changed for me in three, three weeks. So I'm just gonna take a little sip here. Okay. So week one and probably a little bit before week one, well, before that, we were social distancing probably six weeks ago, I guess, if we were to look all the way back. But the last three weeks, so week one, I'm stocked, I'm prepared. We got our hand washing and sanitizing, um, routine down pat, got a big sign on the door as the family comes in so they know exactly what to do. We're on it. I'm working from home as usual. You know, that's, that's nothing new for me, actually. Keto's on point, doing great. Not a ton of change 
you know, but starting to feel a little stressed because, you know, obviously on the news and everything. And that was the week that I really, really started organizing um, every drawer, every cupboard, garage, basement, everything. I wanted to know what I had, what my stock was. I wanted, it, it made me feel better to have everything all organized. And I know a lot of you guys were doing that too, because we were kind of talking about that back then. Okay, so that was week one. Week two, um, still had really good supplies, didn't even need to go get anything. Um, hands are now starting to get a little raw from all the washing. So I had some really good lotion I started putting on, but I mean, you're washing your hands like a million times a day, which you're not used to. Um, then things started going through my mind like, oh, this was my week to get my nails done. Hmm. Um, so they're still, they're still okay. I filed them down and, uh, you know, polished them a little bit or whatever, but I'm on borrow time here. I mean, next time I don't even know what they're going to look like. Um, and then I was thinking, okay, like, um, I don't even know if I remember how to like dye my own hair. Um, you know, I have a great hairstylist that does my, my hair. And so, you know, I mean, I guess I can do like root touch up or whatever. And I guess that's how it's going to be. Um, you know, these are funny things that were just kind of going through my mind on week two. Um, I was still dressing for work, um, as I do all the time. And um, I was still keto strong, feeling really good. Um, and then in that second week, um, I did actually get sick. I will fully tell you that. Um, who knows? You know, who knows what it was? I mean, there were people in my life that had come in my home and they were sick and, you know, whatever. Um, so whatever. That was you know, who, who knows, right? Because here we don't get tested. I mean, unless you're in really dire straits or you're in the healthcare um, field, you're not going to get tested, right? So we were already self-isolating. It really doesn't matter. We were all um, confined pretty much anyways. But anyway, so that was really near, here nor there, except for the fact that because of not feeling 100% or whatever, um, I wasn't really up on my keto like I mean I was kind of doing it but then not kind of doing it or whatever then week three came along and I started to feel um, super isolated um, it sort of came out of nowhere I don't know why because I had been doing so good up until this point but I had been feeling really I think part of it too was like the weather had changed and the weather was like really really nice before and even with us neighbors we would say sit outside but six feet apart we'd all have our own coffee in our own chairs and it was just like a little bit of interaction or whatever. But by the time we got here, like the weather had changed and gotten really cold. Nobody was doing that anymore. For many weeks, we haven't had anybody come to our house or anything. And so, you know, it just really started to hit me. And it's weird because, like I said, it kind of came out of nowhere. It's not like I got this all of a sudden, you know, it, it was, I, I don't know how to explain it, but it was just like, I just didn't feel like myself anymore. And there was one night, and I admitted this in Keto Confessions, there was one night where we went for a drive because we had literally not been out of the house for so long as so we we're just going to just drive around and just see some stuff or whatever. And um, we drove by McDonald's and um, I don't know why, because like I'm not like a huge fast food fan. I never really have been. But there was just something about seeing those golden arches and I just could not, like I, I had to have it and it wasn't my husband's fault. It wasn't his idea. It was totally my idea. And I said, I have to have McDonald's. So we ended up going through the drive through and getting McDonald's and I feel like that was kind of the, the start of my really bad. So I've said this before that I'm super sensitive to grains. Um, grains cause me a lot of anxiety and a lot of um, just like feeling down. And then it also spikes insulin so much. This is ongoing for everybody, but it spikes your insulin so much. And then you have a lot of glucose running in your body. And then when you have a lot of glucose in your body, it makes you have all these cravings. And so for me, that was like, it wasn't just that, but it was, let's just say it was like the... The gas that got thrown on the fire <laughs> i guess because i was already starting to you know i wasn't tracking i wasn't really super following i'm sh pretty sure my glucose was getting higher just by osmosis right just by not even doing my usual thing and then you do this i do this okay so then i had mcdonald's and it was like okay now now i've thrown gas on the fire now it's exploded um now what so now that would have been a really great time 
to do my one and done and say, that's it, no more. And I did, I actually did the next day. And I was truthful on my um, keto confessions. I was absolutely truthful. I did the next day. But you know, glucose stays in your system for a very long time. Grains stay in your system for a very long time. And so, you know, I can't remember exactly. I don't even know what day it is half the time. Is it Monday today? I, I don't even know. <laughs> but um, it was probably like two days after or something like that, maybe one day after. I don't know. And then all of a sudden, I just started to feel like, oh, whatever. And I just started eating stuff. And oh, man, I don't even want to I don't even want to go all into it because it's like super embarrassing. But, you know, like Easter's coming, you know, chocolate stuff. And it was it was just awful. It was just awful. And um, I just didn't I, I just felt a little bit like I just didn't even want to change at that point. If that makes any sense. You know, like when you're in it and you're just kind of like, I honestly don't even care right now just that feeling, right? And it's just everything. I mean, it's like we got the news and we were worried about our families. We're worried about the world. <laughs> I mean, there's just, there's, there is a lot. And then sometimes we just need to check out, you know, sometimes we just need to mentally check out maybe with our eating and stuff like that. We're just like, F it. I don't even care right now or whatever. And so that was kind of where I was at last week. And then, like I said, kind of peaked um, before the weekend there. And um, it was kind of on Friday that I said, okay, um, that's it. <laughs> um, I'm done. I'm done with this. Um, I'm getting my shit together and I'm going to be doing something because bottom line is um, the best things that we can possibly do for our immune system. I mean, honest to goodness. And this comes from regular doctors. This comes from keto doctors. This is not new information. It's keeping our glucose low for sure. And also doing a little bit of time-restricted eating. That's also very, very well known um, because it really, really keeps our immune system in top form. It takes out all the crap in our body and forces it out if you can do it. I mean, when I'm saying, you know, time to eat, I'm not saying long fast. That's, that's actually something that has come out quite a bit. I have two videos, I think, posted in... Um, oh, geez, I changed it around now. So what is it like unit? <laughs> I'm going to say six anyways intermittent fasting um and the keto doctors have been saying for quite a while and i have been reiterating what they've been saying is that longer fasts right now are not prudent or it's really not good for us to be doing that right now and when i say long fast like anything over 48 hours um the reason being is because our cortisol levels go up temporarily which temporarily lowers our immune system there's some other um, things in play too but the bottom line is is that when you do long-term fasting it does temporarily lower your immune system now after you get out of it and after a day or two back on it actually boosts your immune system higher but the point is right now with everything going on we don't want to do anything to lower our immune system at this time however short-term intermittent fasting works really really good really really helps the immune system i'm going to find a couple videos today and i'm going to post them in the group and then i'll put them in the units as well um so like even if you just want to skip one meal that's great you want to skip two meals that's great basically up to 48 hours um is is still highly recommended anything that you can do in that is really really great but anything beyond that i mean you're you're kind of taking your chances and i will say okay like right now I want to itch my face so bad. I'm just going to say that right now. I can't tell you how many times I, I want to scratch my face. I wonder if I could just take like a Kleenex or something and just go. Okay. I just have to do it. Like I I cannot believe through all this time how many times I, I need to touch my face. I don't know if you guys have found that. It's just like sidebar or whatever. But um, I feel like I just want to <laughs> because I know I'm, I shouldn't, right? Um, anyways. <clears throat> yeah. So that's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about like how you guys are feeling and I'm going to go back and read in the comments of how you guys are feeling this week and then I'm going to tell you about my get my shit together plan this week because I made a plan for myself I actually spent the weekend doing a lot of um just inner reflection I actually tried to stay off social media quite a bit I didn't watch the news near as much that, that actually doesn't like upset me too too much but I just kind of wanted a little all-out boycott um and I just spent a lot of time on my own just thinking about things um, which was really great. I felt like I had like a little vacation. Um, it was kind of nice. I did a lot of reading, 
you know, that kind of thing. But then I kind of figured out, okay, what is my plan and what's going to make me feel better? And everybody is different. Everyone is different in what makes them feel better. Some people are lucky enough that they live on property and they, they can go ride their horses. Um, Lynette, I know you're on here and you can go ride your horses. Oh, and actually, um, Julia also has property and you guys can go out there with your animals and stuff. And that is so fantastic. I mean, it's whatever is going to um, brighten your mood and, and get you back on track. Um, oh, I'm just reading here near. I found you as well and also got an email from Amazon that my <laughs> BHB is back in stock. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. I should say that. Yes. Um, BHB had been off, you know, with Amazon, it's always a crazy ride and they have their own reasons for sometimes pulling a product um, off the listings and it has nothing to do with what's going on right now um, in the world and then you just have to fight with them <laughs> in order to um, get your products back on so um, keto bhb this is what we're talking about um, it doesn't say naked anymore it says bear but anyway that's what we're talking about it's amazing electrolyte drink energy drink um it helps you get into ketosis which is great right now too for your health but anyways it had been off for quite a few weeks and so that was part of the stress that i had been dealing with for the last few weeks is just dealing with amazon it's always always a pleasure um anyways it's back so fyi that's that's really great thanks for reminding me near um yeah so i was um this weekend going over what makes me happy what really helps me get on track what helps me to feel in control of my environment and my world and these are some of the things that i came up with and i'm just going to read them you guys are going to have your own but i am going to read to you what makes me happy and the things that that i have done and am going to do okay before i actually get up so i'm awake but i'm not actually not actually out of my bed yet you know i'm just laying there I don't even pick up my phone. I don't want to look at social media. I don't want to check out the news. I don't want to answer any questions, nothing. I, this is just me time. It's just me by myself. And, um, oh, first, first I will say that um, in my new plan, I'm waking up at the same time every day. Um, that was something that I always did before. And then in the last few weeks of, I've got all the time in the world, um, I started not getting up at the same time every day and it was getting later and later and later. And that just doesn't work for me. Again, everyone's different, but it just, it right out of the gate made me feel lazy waking up in the day like that. So now I've changed it that I get up at the same time every day. And ironically, um, I set my alarm and then I woke up five minutes before my alarm, which is actually pretty standard, but before I was just like sleeping, like ongoing. So anyway, getting up at the same time every day, um, in my mind, I have my own thoughts, like I visualize my day. I visualize that everything is going to go amazing. Um, I just visualize good things. Some people might call it prayer. I mean, whatever it is to you, but I just have these thoughts in my mind before my feet hit the floor, before I do anything else. Then I get up and um, I have a little room and I have, it's sort of like my little Zen room or whatever. And I turn on my diffuser. I love lavender, but everybody has their own favorites that they like. And I have a gratitude journal. I've written in it for years. Um, and I write down the things that I am grateful for. I don't talk about any problems. I don't write down any worries or anything. Just the things that I am grateful for and whatever comes to mind that day. Um, and then after I write in my gratitude journal, I get on the floor and I actually do stretching and stretching yoga. It's just like, you know, whatever. Um, it's not anything to a DVD or anything like that. It's just things that, that really make me feel really good. So I just get my body all limbered up and everything. Um, yeah, so that's that little scene right there is um, literally sets my day, sets my day. And I found so many times when I have gotten off of that, my day is totally different. Um, there's something about having intention for the day. There's something about being grateful for what you have and the people in your life. It's just, it's really, really powerful. And, and you can always find something, you know, it's, I, I know things can be really, really tough sometimes, but there's always something to be grateful for. So that's the kind of thing that works really, really good for me. So that's when I first start. Now, other things that I'm incorporating in my day in no particular order is exercise. Um, <laughs> that is, that is something that I was doing quite a bit. Um, I admit that it, I'm not 
a lover of exercise. I do have to kind of force myself a little bit. Unlike some people in the group, they're just, they're so motivational for me when I hear them saying uh, what they're doing for their workouts and stuff. And I, I truly wish that I loved it um, like some people do, but I was doing it on a regular basis and that has gone by the wayside big time. And that also makes a difference in how you feel, right? Your, <clears throat> your energy levels, um, your endorphins, your happiness factor. I mean, all of it, it makes such a difference. So I'm uh, making this promise to myself that I'm exercising twice a day. So one is going to be more like a gym exercise. Like it could be using my body weight or I've got hand weights. Um, I do have a treadmill and a rower. I'm very lucky. So I can do that or whatever. So one will be more like a gym type workout. And then at least once I'm going to have an outdoor walk or hike. So whatever I have time for, maybe with the dogs, maybe without, um, the weather's been kind of eh, iffy, but it's supposed to get nice today, but I don't care I, I, if it's snowing, I'm putting on my toque and my gloves and I'm getting outside and I'm going to walk and I'm making this promise to myself because living in a, like a subdivision, I don't get the fresh air like I should. And with the weather being crap, like I said, it's, that's really put a damper on things. So I'm dedicating two times a day, like two different kinds of exercises. I'm making that promise to myself. Um, self-care things, um, that have kind of gone by the wayside, things like blocking out time without the news or social media. I am going to have blocks of time during the day where I'm just out, uh, listening to music. I love, love, love music. Um, all kinds of music. I listen to classical. I listen to jazz. I listen to eighties rock, which is my favorite. I love country. I love all kinds of music. So whatever I'm in the mood for, having music on that really, really um, brightens my day, especially when I'm working. I really like to have music on. Um, reading for pure enjoyment. Um, I'm one of these people that I study a lot and I have a lot of books on health and stuff and I, and I love it. I love, love, love learning that kind of stuff. But there's something so amazing about getting lost in just a, just a, nothing book you know what i mean like it's just a maybe it's a romance book or maybe it's a travel book or something and it has i'm not actually learning anything i'm just allowing my mind to get lost in the story so i'm going to be doing more of that i actually have a little room set up it's actually a guest room slash secondary office but i have like a day bed in there with little pillows and little table and the lamp and stuff and that's where i do my reading and um i'm going to be doing that every day um, also, if, if needed, I might be taking a nap. Um, you know what? I'll just see. <laughs> Sometimes in the afternoon, you know, and you feel kind of like whatever. I have this little meditation that I like to do. I have it on my iPod. And um, I don't know about you guys when you meditate, but like I always seem to like fall asleep. And it's okay because your subconscious mind is still hearing. It's a guided meditation. And so I will usually do that every afternoon and then you know, bonus, I'll usually fall asleep for about 10 or 15 minutes. And it's quite um, a sight to see if you're one of my neighbors on here. I don't know if you're on here, um, but I live on a very quiet road, but the sun is, uh, is in the front of the house. I go where the sun is. I'm a sun chaser. Um, I love to be out in the sun. I love to get vitamin D. I love the feeling. It makes me happy. That's also part of the reason why I've probably been down the last couple of weeks. So we've had no sun. It's been really depressing. But anyways, I will go out front in the sun when I know it's going to be out, you know, good. And I'll put on my earbuds and I have like an Andorondic chair and a stool and I stretch out. I got a pillow behind my head. I mean, I am, I am camped out and um, I will put on my meditation. And of course I you know, I close my eyes and I'm just following along. But at some point, I usually fall asleep. And at that point, you know, what my family calls the codfish, you know, I'm just kind of like, ugh, you know, my, <laughs> my mouth just kind of opens and I just, yeah, if I'm out, I'm out. I mean, it doesn't matter if I'm at a, if I'm at a concert, or I'm driving in the car or I'm on a plane. If I'm out, I'm out and that's all there is to it. And so if you walk by during this time, you get what you get. So I'm just going to say that right now. If you walk by and you see me sacked out like that, don't look because that's what you're gonna get. But I usually end up falling asleep a little bit. Um, and that's actually really nice for me. I'm a, you know, cat napper. I can have a short little nap and then it energizes me for the rest of the day. So I'm just saying like, I'm going with it. I'm not gonna be like, oh, try not to sleep or whatever. If my body needs it, I'm taking it. So, um, okay. And then the other thing is my keto plan. What is my keto plan in my um, get my shit together week? My keto plan is I still want to do some intermittent fasting. 
I am not going to be doing longer fasts. And, and I wanted to go back to what I said before about the experts recommending not doing longer fasts. And we're talking over 48 hours. I highly recommend that whether you're doing the bone broth cleanse or you're doing, you know, just regular fasting, it, it, it sort of applies to both. I know with the bone broth cleanse, we're getting more calories and stuff, but I still would err on the side of caution. Your body is still definitely going into the autophagy phase and stuff with um, the bone broth cleanse. I really strongly suggest keep it 48 hours or less. I really do just during this time. We just want to be ultra careful. Um, so my keto plan. So what I'm doing is I made a list this weekend of foods. Like what, what is really important to me is nutrient dense dense foods. That's always been very, very important to me. I don't, okay, unless I'm going off, I don't like crap foods. <laughs> so let's just say that. I mean, obviously I go off and I have junk food and stuff just like anybody else, but I'm saying generally speaking, I really like nutrient dense foods and I like every mouthful to count sort of thing and every sip to count. So I really like to make that a priority. So when I was thinking this weekend about what's really important to me, that came to mind and I kind of made a list. So this is this is my little power food day. And I mean, I can post it if you want. This is just mine personally. This is no, you know, I don't have like a lot of like great, you know, I, I didn't talk, I don't talk about like what all the benefits are of each thing. This is just my own thing, but I'll just, I'll just list to you some of the things that I feel are important for me that I want to get into my day. Um, apple cider vinegar and psyllium. I want, I get that drink in, uh, my fatty coffee, obviously for all the good reasons of the MCT oil and, um, even coffee has a lot of great benefits. Um, mid morning I'm having, uh, my, um, electrolyte drink, which is my, BHB drink, but I also add um, potassium citrate to that, and that can be also um, cream of tartar, you know, same if you don't have uh, potassium citrate. And um, I make it with mineral water because I want the extra minerals and also some lemon. So I happen to have fresh lemons now, so I squeeze like a half of a lemon, I put that in there. But like, say we run out of lemons or whatever, you can always get like constituted, like lemon juice um pure lemon juice and then you just take like a tablespoon of it so i've been adding that so that's sort of like my mid-morning drink um for lunch i'm going to be doing um, a bone broth drink that's my bone broth powder and then i also and i'll put the recipe in here i've I posted in the group many times i have a set recipe for this um I'm also adding to it, even though it already has collagen, I'm adding some more collagen to it. So just a collagen peptide that I happen to have. This is a great time to be using up a lot of stuff that you guys might have at home, I will say. And then also in this drink, um, and this is something that I really want to mention to you guys because we don't have access to the vegetables that we always have for a lot of us anyways. And if you don't, if you're not lucky enough to grow it yourself or live in a part of the country where the weather is really good right now, um, I am using a greens powder. I'm not even going to show you an example because honestly, I'm just using up stuff in my cupboard. And I think that's what everyone should be doing, using up what they have. But I happen to have a greens powder. Um, it's got like um, spirulina in it and then like all the good greens and stuff and it's super super condensed so in my bone broth drink at lunch I'm putting in a scoop of that because I want to get in the benefit of the greens um, also at lunch I'm having sauerkraut and kimchi those are two things that are like really super good for the gut and um, so I just mix the two together um, I think I've mentioned before that sauerkraut is really good for fighting bacteria and kimchi is really good for fighting um, viruses. So I just eat them together. I think they taste really good, actually. <clears throat> so fatty coffees, obviously, talked about that. Um, what else? Yeah, so those are the things that I'm incorporating in my day, um, some of them a couple of times. And then, um, and then I would have my dinner. You know, this is on a normal keto day. Um, then I have my dinner and then my dessert. Um, and again, I want to plan this ahead of time so it's ready. I love um, making a chia hemp cereal mix. And you can do it however you want. I figured it out to my macros what works for good for me. And it's one tablespoon of chia seed, three tablespoons spoons of hemp. And then I put in a half a cup of unsweetened almond milk. And I just put that together and stick it in the fridge first thing in the morning let it gel all day. Then when I'm going to have it as my dessert, I add another half because it thickens up pretty good. Then I add um, a half, another half a cup of almond milk 
and then I mix it up and then sometimes I add some stevia or whatever I mean it really depends on the day but um yeah and so that's kind of like my dessert and that's going to give me like a lot of protein and nutrients in that and then in my evening I have this new little concoction that um, I tested out and I really really like it it's like a I guess it's like a calming uh, drink and so I make tea so whatever kind of tea that you want to make is great um, I don't like caffeinated in the evening and I really like raw it looks like Rui Boos, but I'll, but it's pronounced Roy Boss. I was told at the health food store, but that's my favorite tea. Um, I get the raw green one, and I like it because it tastes just like orange pico, but it doesn't have the tannins of orange pico, which always used to give me heartburn. Um, and it's caffeine free, and it's loaded with antioxidants, like loaded. Um, I will actually post in here later um, the one that I use. Not sure if it's available everywhere, but you could probably find something comparable. Um, that was something I learned years ago was the antioxidant benefits of a tea like this. But anyways, I make that tea. And then I add one tablespoon of coconut oil. And I'm actually using, you know, the lardy coconut oil, not my MCT oil. Not that there's anything wrong with using my MCT oil, but I already got it during the day. And I kind of want like just the different aspects of the coconut oil. And there's something that I really love about regular coconut oil. I, I really love the taste of it. I love that coconut -y taste. So I put that in and then um, calm, which I don't have down here, but you guys, we've talked about it before in the group. <clears throat> it's called Calm, and it's a, a magnesium powder. Um, so you can just drink it by itself with water, but I've been adding it to the tea, and then I've been blending it. And so this this has been really nice. It's been a nice thing to have in the evening. Um, it's been really helping me sleep well. Um, so that's that that's been really good. Um, so anyway, this is what's made me feel really good is coming up with my plan so I actually wrote out and I encourage you guys to do this yourself some of you are really good at doing this I know people in the group do this all the time but either in your in your app that you use or just like I just like doing it on a piece of paper and I just write it all out I typed it all out I should say and then I add it up you know sorry what <laughs> Okay, there we go. What the macros are and everything like that so that I could see for my day, basically figuring it all out because I wanted to get in all these awesome foods, which by the way, everything that I've mentioned other than the sauerkraut and kimchi, but that's even, you know, these are things that are staples that do not go bad. Okay, so everything that I have talked about in here, they stay in your fridge or they stay in their cover and they're good for like some of them years, <laughs> you know. Uh, these are not things that you you can get them on Amazon. You, these are not difficult things to get. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention was nutritional yeast. I really love nutritional yeast. It has a lot of really good health benefits. And then um, I'm incorporating that in my dinner, <clears throat> making sure I get two tablespoons at dinner. <clears throat> Excuse me. So anyway, um, that's why I wanted to come up with a Power Foods Day for me that works for me, that I feel like I'm getting everything that I need. And these are things that I don't have to worry about, am I gonna be able to get it at the stores or fresh or whatever, like I know I can count on these things. And then if I can get, you know, obviously for my dinner, I'm gonna go for, you know, meat or fish and as fresh veggies or frozen veggies or whatever I can get, but at least I feel like I'm getting all this other stuff, right, during the day. So my keto plan is I'm gonna do a day like that, so I'll just call it my normal keto day, but I, I, I named it Power uh, Food Day is what I named it. But a Power Food Day, and then the next day, I'm going to do more like intermittent fasting. So I'm going to do like a 16-8, or I'm going to do an OMAD. And I'm going to go with how I feel. Because sometimes, I don't know if you guys feel like this, but you wake up in the morning and you go, you know what, I had planned on doing X, but I'm just not feeling it. And I really think that sometimes you need to do what works for you. Now, obviously, I think the best thing to do is to start off with fat. Um, I, I do believe in that. And then see how you feel after that and see if you can go push it a little bit further. But that's my plan is having a power food day one day and the next day do more, you know, not eating and then having a bigger meal like lunch and dinner or dinner or something like that. And I'm just going to kind of rotate between the two again giving myself the freedom that if I'm not feeling it or whatever sometimes I get up in the morning and I go it's gonna be a four fatty coffee day and that's just all there is to it and if that's if that's what I need um, to help me in my day that's that's what I'm gonna do okay so I want to go back and just see what you guys are saying about how you're feeling right now good morning Lisa you've joined us yay <clears throat> 
Yeah, you know what? Lisa, you hit it right on, you hit the nail right on the head. Lisa said, when I was talking before about how I had to have McDonald's that day, and I had not been out of the house for so long, and there was just something about seeing those golden arches, she said McDonald's was a piece of normal. Oh my God, I could almost, okay, I'm not gonna cry. I, it's ridiculous. It, it, it's honestly ridiculous, but you're so right. You're 100% right. Like, who didn't have that when they were a kid? Like, when I was a kid, that was a big deal. Like, if, if my dad came home with McDonald's, that was a big deal. It was a huge treat. And then as we got older, of course, you know, we're teenagers and we have our own money and stuff. And that was the hangout. That's where we used to hang out was McDonald's. It totally is the normal. And in that moment, when I was out, I had to have it. I just had to have it. And it was damn good. I had a filet of fish and I had a quarter pounder with cheese and I had large fries. <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's hilarious because it's, it's, it's honestly, it's, it's not, I mean, it's just nothing that I would normally have, but like that, that day I just had to have it and it did feel normal and it was so good and I needed that. But then unfortunately it kind of, it took a bad turn after that. Unfortunately, it wasn't, it wasn't as one and done as I would have liked it to have been, but oh well, that's okay. Um, Carenza said, I had to get dressed in real clothes <coughs> and wear real <coughs> makeup and, and, and yes, totally, totally. It makes you feel so much better. And like, like I said, normally I dress, I dress for work normally last couple weeks. No, nope, it's been, can you see that yoga pants and coffee? Literally, literally sometimes pajamas. Yep. Um, there was one day that I actually forgot to brush my teeth. Not sure how that happened. Nighttime came and I was like, holy crap, I didn't brush my teeth today. It, 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 like, I don't know, like sometimes these days just blend into the next and when you're not in your normal routine and whatever. So yes, getting dressed, putting on makeup or, you know, doing showering, doing, doing the things that we normally do that really helps set our day. That's for sure. Yes, Kimberly says getting outside help getting outside helps big it absolutely does getting that fresh air and you know i use the excuse of oh well it snowed oh it's kind of cold out that's no excuse that's no excuse i live in canada for goodness sakes if we never went outside i mean if we never went outside because it was cold we would never go outside so that's no excuse not to go outside i totally agree um just getting that fresh air makes such a difference okay yes michelle i will post um after i get off here now please keep in mind guys this is just my personal personal thing i'm not saying this is what you have to do i don't even know what your macros are i don't know what your weight is or anything like that i'm just saying for me and my macros and and what i'm trying to follow this is what works for me but i'll give you a good idea and you guys can you know look at it i will for sure post this in this thread and then i will also do a separate post um just in case um does the tea break the fast kaylee um like, are you saying, so if you were fasting all day and then you were having the, the tea that I said, um, no, it doesn't. I mean, it wouldn't either way. It wouldn't either way because um, as all the experts have been talking about for quite some time now, um, coconut oil and MCT oil, that doesn't even break a fast. So, I mean, we need to put that out of our mind. That was kind of old information. Um, it really doesn't, even though some people do prefer to fast without having it, but all the experts are now saying don't even worry about that um it doesn't increase your glucose or anything like that so don't worry about that and then the calm from what i can see on the calm there's nothing in it that i can see that would break a fast so i don't think there should be any problem with that whatsoever um so anyways like i've been i've been having it at night and then one day when i was sort of testing this out i tested my ketones the next morning because so essentially from after dinner on right i've been fasting i guess technically and then i tested myself and i was still in ketosis no problem so for me like it was totally fine i don't think there's anything in that concoction um that would do it that would break anything um nutritional kimberly says nutritional yeast have it but haven't used it yeah you know i was kind of like that too it was in my cupboard for the longest time you know dr berg talks about nutritional yeast all the time and sometimes you have to hear things quite a few times and um so now I'm really trying to utilize it. Like say I'm doing like a veggie stir fry or something like that. Um, I'll just sprinkle it in, it mixes it in. And honestly, like as a bonus, it it makes anything that you put with it taste more buttery. It has like a really nice buttery flavor. It certainly is, 
is nothing offensive. It's like actually really, really good. Um, so I just kind of add it to my dinner. I find that whatever I'm having for dinner, like one time I actually sprinkled it on top of, I had some butter on my steak and I smeared the butter on my steak and then I put the nutritional yeast on and the nutritional yeast just mix in with the butter. Oh my gosh, it was fabulous. Um, so it's almost like more butter is almost what it seems like. So that's that's what I'm doing. I'm And this is why I made this list for myself is because I'm not gonna remember all these things. Um, and I really wanna make sure I get it in. So I'm actually gonna be, um, this paper that I'm showing you, I'm gonna be putting it up on my cupboard and I'm going to look at that. And so I'm just, oh, right, get that. Oh yeah, right, get that. And I'm um, even setting a timer um, on my phone just to kind of remind me, hey, don't forget your electrolyte drink, you know, have a nice big glass of water while you're doing it. Cause sometimes I can get really lost in what I'm doing with work or whatever, or, you know, self wallowing, <laughs> whatever. I can get really lost in whatever and, and forget to have these things. And that's what I want to do on my power food days. I want to just get it all in but still being within my macros. That's sort of like my goal. So made me happy making that list actually. It made me feel like I was really making a plan for myself um, and really, um, you know, going with the things that are true to me. Like, so to me, it's really important to have nutrient dense foods. It's really important for me to have a routine and a schedule and stuff like that. So when I was planning this out, even though I was kind of like not in the zone at all, I was still a little checked out over the weekend. Um, it, I could feel myself getting happy, just planning this out. And, and sometimes that's maybe all it takes, you know, when you're kind of in a funk and you feel like you're, you're not, you know, you don't have your mojo and you're not in your thing. You don't even have to say right this very minute, I'm going to do better. You can just make a plan to do better. You can just say, what would it look like? You know, what, what, what could it look like if I was to get myself on track? What, what things, you know, would I need to do or plan out or whatever? And just thinking about it is already putting the plan in action. Like it's already starting the wheels. And then this morning, like I said, before I got out of bed, I visualized, oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm nailing it today. I'm going to get my exercise in. I'm going to be going outside. I'm going to be having my power foods day. Um, I'm going to get a lot of work done or whatever. I already visualized it. So in my mind, it already happened. Like it's already happening um, before I even got out of bed. So that's something that, that really works for me. Um, <clears throat> Kimberly, girl, we're gonna get through this. Yes, we are. And, and I just wanna say, like I said, that I don't want anyone to ever, ever feel bad about themselves when they go off. We are all human and we are going through a very trying time right now. Like something that we never thought we would be dealing with and then on top of that we all have our own personal things right we all have our own things and it's a lot and working and not working either one can be stressful I mean all this stuff really piles up and I don't want anyone to feel bad and another thing I want to say too is what's very common in the group is a lot of times we're like you're doing really well and so you'll post a lot and you'll comment a lot or whatever and then something happens when you're not following your keto and you're not feeling on your game and a lot of people just kind of disappear. Maybe they're looking, I'm not sure if they're looking or they're not even there at all, um, but they're not commenting and they're not posting. And I've had this discussion with a couple of people and what I'm hearing is, well, I feel like, you know, I shouldn't really be commenting because I'm not, you know, I'm not really doing it right now, but that's life that is life and this group has never been about being perfect this group has never been about um you know you always have to nail it or else you know you don't have anything to contribute because i think being honest like i'm not saying i want anyone to be posting pictures of mcdonald's and things like that like i don't think that's good and that's certainly not helpful and we don't you know obviously we're not gonna wallow and wallow and wallow over and over but all i'm saying is that being real about how you're feeling I think is a good thing. I think it helps other people realize that they're not the only ones that are feeling like this. It's very normal, um, we're human, and how are we getting ourselves out of it? And ideas that people have might help somebody else. And so I just really, really encourage you that no matter where you're at, please still be part of the group, still comment, still comment and um, be part of our great community um, because it, we just want to be there for each other. All of us want to be there for each other. Um, I know I get so much value of what you guys say. And when I was kind of in my 
really kind of downtime, there were so many things that I saw people post that really, really helped me. Like it truly did. And it helped me to turn things around for myself and make a plan for myself. And now I'm feeling a lot better. Um, but I just want to thank you so much for everything that you guys do. Like really, I, I really get so much out of the group myself. I do. Um, Let's see, Kimberly has a question. Do you count veggies as carbs? I do, but not sure I should. You know, Kimberly, the way I do it, I kind of follow what Dr. Burke says, and he says not to track like leafy greens because leafy greens especially, like I'm not really sure what he says about all other carbs, but he specifically talks about leafy greens in being that they are so low in macros and it actually takes more energy to chew it and digest it than what the macros actually are. So they more than cancel themselves out. And it also will encourage you to eat more like if, it ha if you have it available. So the way that I've always done it is I never count leafy greens and even just regular vegetables. Mm, it's kind of like, sort of, um, let's put it this way. If my day I had had more carbs than usual, like I have this coconut bread, I won't even tell you guys about it because it's just local. Unfortunately, I can't even like, tell you guys about because it it's literally just local but um it's higher in total carbs and so um because it's quite high in calories and total carbs if i have that in the day kind of like then i know ooh, like i'm gonna be pretty high come dinner time and then i would if i was having broccoli or brussels sprouts or cauliflower whatever i would actually track those not leafy greens, but I would track those. If my day has been like a lot of days, I don't even have any carbs during the day, like at all. And then dinner time comes and I'm having, you know, whatever vegetables, I'm just kind of a little bit lazy that way. Like I don't even bother. So I think it really depends on how close you are teetering to your line in the sand as far as carbs go. Um, if you, if you are being very, very strict on your carbs, then I guess I would say you should track it um if you really don't eat much anyways and those are kind of the only ones you get i really don't think you need to worry about it i think you could just eat it and not even worry um yeah sorry it's not not a direct answer but that's kind of what i do sonia oh so sonia's answering you right there she doesn't count the green ones celery spinach but i do count the ones like yellow squash eggplant yeah that's a great rule of thumb yeah because those ones are going to be higher definitely um yeah exactly Okay, sorry, reading. Um, Karenza says, I'm breaking my fast with eggs and guacamole again just because it is simple and it has great macros. Yes, it's fantastic. I mean, you're getting tons of fat. You're getting really good protein. That's fantastic. And I'm going to say, well, depending on when you're breaking it, I was going to say you're a big fatty coffee fan. You might have that too. Um, broccoli and cauliflower also basically free. And I put them in my calculator and don't worry about those carbs. Yeah, exactly. I really don't... Um, worry too much and like I said unless I'm teetering on my car but I'm trying to keep my carb load now that I'm out of you know my my downtime I'm really really trying to keep my carb load as low as possible like not even planning it in my day like you saw in my power food day there literally is very little carbs um what did, what did I have left for the day well, I guess it does kind of add up a little bit. Surprisingly, nutritional yeast does have carbs. But when I add up, if I have every single thing that's in here in my day before dinner, it still comes to 14. So you know what? That's, that's you know, but a lot of that too was my, my chia um, little cereal thing. That alone had six. But I feel like it's really important. And I also kind of save them more towards the end of the day that works out good for me okay so that's what I wanted to talk about today um, because we were talking in the group about getting our shit together and <laughs> I know I know that a lot of people are in the same boat and it's you know I get it I totally get it um, sometimes when you're in that funk and it's really hard to get out and I don't know you know for some people what might work for them is they say that's it starting right now i'm going to be super strict i'm going to track and i'm going to do all that stuff or whatever and that is great if that works for you if you have been off for a long time and are pretty you know basically like completely off keto and have been for quite some time and almost like starting over 
Um, it might be better for you to kind of transition yourself in where you can say, okay, I'm not going to have any grains or sugar for a few days until I'm starting to feel a little bit better and my cravings are gone. And then I'm going to start adding more fat and I'm going to start tracking and you do it more in a gradual way. That is totally up to you. You know yourself what works for you. I know for me, <clears throat> if I've been like really, really off the rails for a long time, like I'm talking extended vacations or something like that in the past, going super strict on day one um, ends up backfiring for me. And the reason being is because my carb cravings become so high that I can't take it. And then I end up binging or something again. So for me, the gradual transition is better. This for me was not a very long being off. Um, it was just a slight deviance. Um, it was more about my mental state than it was really about physically what was going on in my body. And I'm jumping in 100% today with my, with my keto plan. Um, so really, it really depends on where you're at. But wherever you are, Take, and you're not, and if you're not happy with where you are, take some type of a step. If the step is just thinking about what you want to do, maybe writing down what your plan is, what your goals are, that's great. If today is just having a shower and getting dressed in real clothes and maybe putting on some mascara, then that is awesome too. <laughs> I mean, whatever it is that's going to get you back into the zone, getting some fresh air. Um, just doing self-care things like I talked about, any of those things. I just just highly encourage you to um, take some form of action in, in your mind, in your thoughts, and physically take some form of action in the direction that you want to go. And it's amazing how your body will just follow. It, it actually doesn't take that long. I kind of went from down here to up here pretty quickly once I kind of got started on it. So I know you guys can do this too. And we'll talk about this in the group. Um, we're such a great support for each other and we're here for each other. And I will try to remember all the things that I said I would post in here. But if anybody wants to sum up what are the things that I said I was going to post in here, um, that would be helpful. And then I will make sure that I get that in here for you guys. Um, so yeah, so that's it for today. I'm going to go make myself a hot fatty coffee with more fat. This one was a little bit low. And I hope you guys have an awesome day. And let's start this week seriously, like every day is this week, get our shit together. Okay, make a plan, take some kind of action, get our shit together. You guys have a great day, okay? Bye. Hey guys, before you go, hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already, and hit the bell notification so you can be notified every time we have a new video posted. Also down in the description, I will have links to everything that we talked about in our chat today, including information on how you can join my Intentionally Bear Keto Support Group. See you next time.